Hello guys and what's up? Welcome back to another tutorial. It's Captain Friday and today we're going to be learning how to make a smooth teleporting game. So with this you'll be able to teleport from one part to another and in the middle your screen will fade to white or any other color you want and there will be a text label that says teleporting and it will make your game that much more polished and better. So we are going to start here. This is just a backdrop I use for the video. So we are going to insert a part, press part. Here we have our part. We are going to rescale this to whatever you want. I'm just going to make it like this. You can make it as small or big as you want. I'm going to change this color to red. And as you can see in the Explorer tab, we have the part here. Now I'm going to rename this part to Start Part. This is where the player will walk into when they first want to teleport somewhere. We need to make sure that this is anchored, obviously, because if it isn't anchored, then this game is going to suck. Now, we're going to duplicate this, so Control D or right click and press duplicate in the Explorer. I'm just going to do Control D and Control 2 to move. Grab this and move this over here. Just so that we can differentiate these parts, I'm going to change this to Turquoise. And we're going to name this part to End Part. Now, essentially, you can move these parts wherever you want in your workspace. You can move the end part to all the way over there, anywhere in your game that you're creating. You can move your start part to anywhere you want. But for now, for its simplicity, we're just going to keep these parts right next to each other. Now, we're going to insert a script in the start part. We're going to name the script to Touched. I'm going to delete print hello world and I'm going to make a variable that references this part. Local start part equals script dot parent. So that is our start part in the workspace. We need to detect when this part is touched by anything. So start part dot touched colon connect function hit. Now hit is the part that touches the start part. This is the start part. So any part that touches it, we need to make sure that the part that touches the start part is a part of a character that is a player. So for example, this base plate could be the part that's touching the start part and we don't want it to get confused making the base plate a player. So we're going to see if hit dot parent colon find first child humanoid, then all players have a humanoid object in them. So if the character, the character is hit dot parent. If that character contains a humanoid, then we know that it's a character of a player. But before we teleport the player, we want to make sure that the screen fades. So over here in the Explorer, we're going to head down to Replicated Storage. And then we're going to insert a remote event. A remote event allows the server, which in this case will be the script, to communicate with the client. So when it communicates with the client, you, the client, will open up the fade screen UI and will fade it with tween service. So we're going to rename this remote event to show transition. And back in our touch script, we're going to do game dot replicated storage dot show transition colon fire client. So let's just define our player here. Local player equals game dot players colon get player by from character. And then we know that the character is hit dot parent game dot replicated storage dot show transition colon fire client and we need to make sure that we define the player that we're firing player this is the parameter that we're sending we're sending the player that has hit the part we need to make sure that the player actually gets there now we're going to do task dot wait 0.5 seconds 0.5 seconds is the amount of time it will take our screen to fade to white when it fades to white we're going to move this player's character position to this end part. Local character equals player dot character. So now we're going to do character dot humanoid root part dot C frame equals game dot workspace dot end part dot C frame. It will wait 0.5 seconds when the player has touched the part and will move the player's character's position to the position of the end part. So this might have been a little boring. Let's get to the fun part where we design our user interface. Head down to starter GUI and insert a screen GUI. Rename the screen GUI to transition. And inside of this, we're going to add a frame. This frame will be the screen that fades to white. 
I'm going to resize this so that it fits the entire screen. I'm going to go to properties so that's easier. I'm going to go down to size and I'm just going to enter 1, 0, 1, 0. This will fill the entire screen. The next part that I'm going to do is really important. Go to the screen GUI and make sure that ignore GUI inset is set to true. This will make sure that the gap that is usually here by default is closed in and will fill your entire screen. Rename this frame to fade. Inside of this frame, I'm going to add a text label. This text label will contain anything you want the player to see. I'm going to select text scaled and I'm going to set background transparency to one of the text label. Now with my mouse cursor, I can scale this to whatever I want. I am going to position this dead smack in the center. I'm going to font face and I want to change this to Fredoka one, a more friendly font. Now I'm going to double click on this and change the text to teleporting dot dot dot. I'm going to change the text color three to this bluish color and I'm going to add a UI stroke just for fun. UI stroke right there. I'm going to set the thickness to 2 and I'm going to select a navy bluish color. I'm going to set the visibility of this text label to false. I'm going to rename this text to teleport text. So now we're going to work with this screen. We're going to insert a local script, rename this to transition. Now if we head back over to our touch script, we can see that we fire this client and we need to receive it on the client side. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to define the remote event that is fired. So local remote event equals game.replicatedSource.show transition. Now we're going to detect when this is fired. Remote event dot on client event colon connect function. Drop a line. And now we are going to smoothly fade this in. Before we fade this in, we need to change the background transparency to 1. That's going to be the default when a player enters. And in this transition, we're going to make a new tween. Local tween service equals game colon get service tween service. Local tween info equals tween info dot new. Now this is where we put in the info about our animation or tween. So how long do you want it to take for the screen to fade? Since we're already waiting 0.5 seconds here to teleport the player, we're going to just wait 0.5 seconds. 0.5, comma, easing style. So if you don't know what easing styles are, I have a link in the description down below with the different easing styles that Roblox provides us with to animate our UI or parts. So I'm just gonna use the default sign, enum.easingstyle.sign, comma, enum.easing direction, dot in out which is what i usually use and that's basically it for our tween info we're going to create the tween that fades the screen in local fade in equals tween service which is a variable we define to get the tween service colon create so in this case we are tweening the fade screen i'm going to put script dot parent which is a frame comma tween info which we already defined here tween info comma property table. Now in this property table, we're defining what property of the frame that we're animating. In this case, it's a background transparency. So when we're defining property tables, we have to use these curly braces. It's kind of weird, but I don't know. We just got to do that. So background transparency, make sure your spelling is the same as mine, equals zero. So now the background transparency will equal zero and the player will be able to see this screen, this entire white screen. So we have our fade in tween here. So we're going to do fade in tween, fade in, colon play. So when we receive this event, this will play. Just to test it, we're going to set the background transparency to one. I'm going to spawn right here. Go to home, play, play here. I have spawned in, now I'm going to touch this red part. As you can see, my screen fades to white, which is exactly what we wanted. Yay! Let's stop the game because we have some more things to script. Back at our transition script, let's make another tween that fades it out and goes back to full transparency. Local fade out equals 
So we don't have to rewrite it all. We can just copy this line, control C, control V, and fade out tween will have the background transparency at one so that this frame is completely invisible. So we fade in when we receive this remote event. Now we're gonna wait one second so the player can register that they're about to teleport somewhere. So task.wait one, or you could do 1.5. I'm just gonna keep it at one. We also need to make sure that the text label we created will be shown when the screen fades to white. So we're going to define the text label, local text label equals script.parent dot teleport text so when this fades in we're going to do text label dot visible equals true and as you can see if we set the visibility of this text label to true we will be able to see this ui and i'm just going to set this to invisible as you can see the text label will be visible we're going to wait one second so that the player can see this text label visible and then drop a line and we're going to play the fade out tween which will fade the screen back to full transparency so fade out colon play and also text label dot visible equals false. So now the text labels visibility will be equal to false. The player will have seen this for one second and back at the touch script, our player will be teleported to the end part C frame. So if all of this has worked, let's test it out in the game. I'm going to set the transparency of the fade frame to one as default. Make sure that the visibility of this frame is set to true now let's try the game and now i'm going to head over to the star part which is a red part everything should be working smoothly so there we go as you can see it worked we saw the teleporting ui which i think could have stayed for a little bit longer but it worked all in all as you can see teleporting and we get sent back here i'm going to pause this game and go back to the transition script i want this to stay a little bit longer to about three seconds so now if we play the game, we'll be able to see the teleport UI longer. As you can see, when I touch this part, it'll show teleporting, wait 3 seconds, and teleport back. And here we are at our second part. Make sure you don't have any typos or any other mistakes or this won't work. We have the touch script here and the transition script. Those are the only two scripts that we need. And if you don't want the player to see this part, you can set its transparency to one and you can set can collide to false. You can move these parts wherever you want in your game. If you want a player to start here and then teleport to another world, you can move it all the way there, anywhere you'd like. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have links to the paste bin down below. If you have any questions or concerns, just drop a comment. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, share, see you later.